Hello, Max NG7M again. It's uh, Saturday morning, and uh, this is a follow-up video to the last video I made on um, showing, you know, getting some data on um, timings generated by a um, USB serial port FTDI chipset as compared to uh, using something outboard. And the reference was a tiny FSK running on Adreno. Uh, nano and I thought about doing this in the first video um, I kind of wish I would have <clears throat> but I got an email from uh, K6LL and it motivated me to <clears throat> do some more testing with like a, a ridiculous well I don't know about ridiculous but um, a baseline that would be a PC that you wouldn't want to typically use with um, N1MM and or serial port keyed uh, FSK. And so I, I just happen to have a Dell Latitude X1. So this is circa 2005. I think these came out in 2005. They were really popular um, as a kind of a first sub micro um, laptop, um, kind of a predecessor to the Ultrabooks, if you want to call it that. And it's running a uh, um, Centrino processor, single core at 1.1 gigahertz and um, per the N1 MM plus spec it doesn't even meet the minimum hardware requirements for the N1 MM plus recommendations from the guys there who do a bang up job on and on updating N1 MM by the way so um, this is again going to be a demo of let's see what the timings look like on a single core processor uh, running Windows 7 32-bit um, with uh, external FSK, not the 64-bit version, obviously. So this this would be like a uh, worst-case scenario. I mean, you you know, as far as this is pretty close to about the bare minimum that Windows 7 would run on these days, too, especially with a single core. So let's um, get to it. I've got the same setup. I don't have um, I wasn't going to take the time to, you know, get the actual uh, computer on here, but let me let me show you what we've got going here. And uh, so, just down here, um, I can zoom in a little bit here with my little boom I've got going here. So right here we've got. Um, actually, I'm going to shut down N1MM. Um, on here, so this is the the little Dell Latitude X1. You guys can look that up if you want, and um, it's a single core um, little machine. And the performance, you can see it's one core here. Um, I could pull up. I don't think you're going to see, but let's try it. If I pull up CPU Z to show you the processor. It has a physical hard drive, a physical 60 gigabyte hard drive that's a ATA6. It's like this old predecessor to the, the standard SATA hard drive interface that you see these days. And uh, you can't really see that, but it's it's a uh, Intel Pentium M. It was their Dothan code name. So um, I think this thing was like over a thousand dollars back in 2005. But the core speed is 1.1 gigahertz, and you, you can't really see it there. But um, as I'm using it here, you can see the CPU is pretty low right now. I've got Windows 7 32-bit. It has all the latest Windows updates on it. It's not a fast machine, uh, suffice it to say. However, I do have 2 gigs of RAM in it, but there's very little RAM in use. So it has, um, you know, there's plenty of, of RAM available. Um, so and then so that's the the PC we're gonna fire up let me just fire up uh, MMTTY again it's 1.7 with external FSK let's pull that up I don't know that you're gonna so we'll pull up MMTTY direct and so there's MMTTY direct and uh, you can't really, I don't know, maybe it looks better if I 
kind of turn it like that. Yeah, that might be a better better representation. There you can see the scope too, which I'll have a another video camera on the on the the scope over here. Uh, let's see. So um, I wanted to show you external FSK. So if there's a later version for 32-bit, I didn't spend enough time searching for it. So here, you're not going to see that, but it's ex external FSK 1.06. And I'm on COM5. I've got a, uh, um, here's my sophisticated setup again. So if that focus is there, all oh, good. Um, so this is FTDI USB to serial. Um, and as I mentioned in the other video, I think this is the one that Elecraft sells. So it's like a 10 foot cable, long cable. And I just have the probe at 10x on the TXD pin and then the ground pin on ground 5. Just, you know, there's my high tech lab setup for you all. Um, and that's sitting over on the chair here, right here. <laughs> and I've got some shelled pistachios here just in case you know I get a hankering for a snack um, okay let's get down to brass tacks I'll come back to the main PC we're recording in 4k video again we make this small um, let's see so you can kind of see what I'm doing with the PC here and then we've got the the scope over here and this is not tweaked and refined like I had it yesterday nearly as much but it'll do the job so I'm in channel one here, so, or channel two actually. I don't even have the channel one hooked up. So it's the blue trace you're going to see on the on the bottom. I've got the trigger, the trigger set here. Um, we're currently, uh, whoa, that's big. We're currently in 50 mega um, samples per second. This scope, by the way, will go up to one giga samples per second. Um, but you know, with the trace width here, we're we're going to see between 50 and 250 like I showed in the other the other video so you know it's curious to see what you guys were gonna think I I was surprised at the outcome here so MTTY um, running here the CPU I haven't kicked on a, a diddle yet CPUs bouncing around 8 percent 7 percent in the task manager and so let's clear it clear the the trace there and let's see what we come up with minimize this and we're just going to do a direct transmit right there so I just started transmitting we've got the trace and so you can see there's certainly a little more jitter as compared to the high-end setup in the previous video um, and I can center that a little bit more here get this it's it's gonna generate the trigger again because I'm moving this around so you're seeing there right at the 22 milliseconds and I I just want you to absorb this for a minute so just sitting here doing a diddle right look at the average on a 1.1 gigahertz Windows 7 32-bit machine running MMTTY with the evil FSK external FSK 32-bit version so you can see the current, the average, the max, and the minimum. At a sampling, got to remember this too, at a sampling of 50 mega samples per second. So the average is bouncing right around 22 milliseconds. Now, if there's somebody out there that could discern that I'm using a 1.1 gigahertz PC with Windows 7 32-bit transmitting these diddles, into a K3 K3s um, with an average width on the diddle. I mean, you can see the numbers there. I, I'm not going to say anymore. Um, now it'll be interesting when we put this thing under load. You know, get it under load or fire it up with um, N1MM, and not even the recommended horsepower to run N1MM. Let me let me squeeze in on the on the uh, oh moving the moving the trigger there not the the width here now you're you'll see a little more jitter because I'm down to two milliseconds per segment there um, but then look at the current again 50 mega samples per second 
So the max is to 23 milliseconds. So the $64 question here is, is what's the threshold on the receiving side? Where, uh, let me clear the, the trigger there. So the max we're seeing right at 23 milliseconds, the average very, very close to 22 milliseconds. And the current obviously is reflecting the average. And the minimum was 21 milliseconds effectively max. So min max is a swing, you know, peak to peak of two milliseconds. And then everything else just right at the moment is uh, within hundredths of a millisecond. Um, right, so you're in the tens of microseconds right there. But, you know, we're not doing anything else on the, on the PC here, right here. Um, so, uh, you know, just clear that again. We're going to go back out to the, let's just get back into, you know, like um, two millisecond or 20 millisecond um, segments here. I'm going to move this guy over. So here you got 20 millisecond seven segments. So then you see 22 right there. Um, so I'm going to stop the, the diddle here in, in MMTTY, clear the trace. We're going to shut down MMTTY. I've installed the latest version of uh, N1MM here. And you, you can see it load up. Again, you, you know, I didn't get too crazy here on the, the whole setup. Um, but uh, let's see. So we're going to fire up N1MM. So it's starting up on this little little PC, this little lappy. I call it the lappy, um, the laptop. And I keep it around to do flashing firmware, or, you know, doing stuff like that with some old code that requires 32-bit OS. Um, you know, like for flashing stepper SDA 100 controllers, that type of thing. So, okay, so here we've got N1MM up and running. And so... You can kind of see that on the screen. You can see the, um, you know, the XY scope and the and the waterfall up here in N1MM. Um, and in the options on N1MM, uh, you're not going to see this, but um, it's still set to the 45.45 .45 baud rate, but uh, um, using um, external FSK. You can't see this. I don't know why I'm showing you that. So, uh, let's see here. Okay, got the trace cleared. And now I'm going to do, oh, let's look at the CPU. And you'll just have to take my word for it here. CPU is around 10%, 10, you know, 9, 10. Bounces up to maybe 15% now and then. Now I don't have any cat going. There's no other serial interface uh, going out to the K, you know, one of my K3s. There's no Win key. I mean, the only USB serial port here is is um, what we're we're scope, you know, putting on the scope there. The Wi-Fi is a, a little Asus little USB dongle. So I'm on the internet with another USB dongle over here. Um, okay. So I like to drag these things out. Did you guys notice that? So here we go. Here's the big moment. Uh, we're going to start the diddle. And let's see what we get inside N1MM. So there's the diddle. There's the trace. You can see the current average max and minimum. And I'll clear the trace, kind of get new raw data there. We're down to a 20 millisecond uh, segment on the horizontal axis there on the, the scope. If I start typing stuff into N1MM, um, type in Jim Lawrence's call, W7CT. Um, the min and max is still a swing of one millisecond either direction. 7M, um, K6LL, who motivated me to do this. You know, I mean, just kind of doing a few things here in N1MM. Let me pull up a browser. So I just pulled up a web browser. <clears throat> and let's um this is a single core PC 
So here I'm on Google. Let's go to um, ARL.org. So there's the ARL website that came up. You can still see the averages within uh, microseconds, you know, tens of microseconds on the average. Minimax has not changed. Uh, let me log into. Um, logbook of the world or something. I mean just doing some other stuff on the PC as we do this. Um, you know just simulating some uh, use here. So they're coming up with the with the login there. I better not log in you might be able to see my my password there. Um, you know if we Let's say we browse to, um, I don't know, pick a website, Ellicraft's website. Com. There. Um, just, just keeping an eye on the min, max, average, and current there with the diddle going. I turned off the uh, uh, watchdog on the PTT timer, so it's not going to stop there. And you, you can see on the video, you can see the XY scope and the waterfall and the uh, spectrum. Um, so there's Elcraft's website. Um, come back and you know go to the config here in N1MM, see if that impacts anything. I don't see any impact. Well, I mean certainly the jitter has been worse than it was on a much higher NPC so we've demoed now on a um, latest Intel Generation 8 Coffee Lake 6-core CPU, 12 logical threads. I demoed on a Generation 3 laptop in the previous video, um, which was the Ivy, Ivy Bridge generation with 4 cores, 8 logical threads. And now we're on a Centrino Pentium M mobile processor from 2005 at 1.1 gigahertz and I'm here to tell you if I was in a bind and I was operating USB COM port generated FSK with the tones generated internally by the K3 um, I, I just can't see how anybody on the receiving side would have a problem decoding my signal. So let's do another little interesting thing. Let me stop the trays. Um, you know, just stop everything. So I clear the trays. I'm going to move everything over. I'm going to run a string of zeros uh, and so we, we see the other component of the mark and shift which will double the duration um, to 44 milliseconds so that's the difference between the mark and the space and we'll see that on the scope too I didn't do that in the other video but you know at least we can see that I'm running some text inside um, the uh, digital interface here on N1MM that's controlling MMTTY so back in N1MM I'm going to go Alt-T we're transmitting again you can see the trace um, I'm just going to leave it on the narrow sitting there so you can see the width, the current, average, max, and minimum. Um, and I'm going to, I'm actually just going to type some things, type something in here so you'll see characters generated on the screen and it might lose the trace. Oop. Let me get back here to the input window. You know, blah, blah, blah. Um, the lazy brown fox jumped over the lazy M radio operator. I should be on the bands working the working some guys in the FOC open thing today and or heaven forbid get on sideband and hand out some WPX contacts but no I'd rather be here making a video of showing diddle timings with uh, uh, MMTTY um, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run in a, just a string of zeros here in the 
transmit buffer. And so we can see the, and so I'll need to zoom in here, I think. So we get one trace on the screen. So it's still sending those. So here, let's see. No, it's done, it's done. Okay, so now we should see 44, and I'm gonna run a bunch of zeros in and then I'll clear the trace so we see 44 millisecond timings. Maybe. Come on. Or I got the... Uh, well, I thought I could do this. There we go. That's the one I wanted. Um, it's done. Uh, ad hoc here. Sorry, guys. So there's the 44. There we go. So similar kind of timings on the, the longer. Um, I always forget mark space, whatever. Anyway, you get the idea. It's pretty damn accurate based on the scope, right? And so if a millisecond one way or the other, when we're sampling at now our, the samples are at 125 mega samples per second and the average um, of course that's going down now because it's back to the um, diddle I don't know what else to say you know we could um, let me do this this would be another okay so I, I've got the the diddle going I'm gonna run CPU Z which is a really popular program and I'm gonna do a stress test on the CPU so this will put the CPU under full load on this little uh, latitude D1 or X1. Sorry, it's a latitude X1. So if you can see right here, I've got CPU Z up. I'm going to the benchmark tab, and we're going to stress the CPU. So you can see the timings down there. I'm clicking on stress the CPU right now. Boom. And I mean, it brought things. It looks like it brought some of the things to the to a halt, but the the traces getting generated um, are still pretty good. So the CPU now is at um, let's see, eh, well the PC isn't working too great here. <laughs> oh, so I just stopped it. I mean, it looks like like a bad idea. Let me pull up the task manager here and you might be able to see that because we're going to drive this little guy up to um, so there you saw some jitter where the max jumped up to 34 milliseconds I'm going to reset the trace and I'm going to stress the CPU again I mean and even the display the, the scope display and MMTTY stopped there so now we're at I should be at hundred percent here which we are, see 100% on the CPU. However, the timings, I mean, there's some, there's some good jitter there, right? The minimum went down to three milliseconds. And it's, you know, bouncing around a little more, but I mean, based upon all the discussions, you, you would, well, there's a, there's, there it's messed up, right? There was a current of six milliseconds. So on a single core PC, you don't want to run a benchmark while you're transmitting RTTY, apparently. So if we stop the the uh, stress test, clear the trace, we're back to very close to 22 milliseconds on the diddle. Okay. I don't know about you, but I've, I've had enough of this. So, um, you know, real world on the receive end, I'm not going to be using this PC. I'm going to be using my nice... Um, multi-core PC and my conjecture right unless somebody presents something that shows different is I'm gonna continue to use COM port, USB COM port and or PCI COM port generated FSK to my K3S because I don't have to worry about any of the uh, levels and I don't have to worry about any of the timings. I've clearly demonstrated that. And again, I've been wrong before. You know, unless somebody can present something that shows um, 
I'm making it harder for guys to decode my signal on the receiving side. <clears throat> it's my conjecture, my opinion, that if you have an Elcraft K3, K3S, and you want the best transmitted signal, whether it's the timing, and you don't want to have to babysit your um, driving the audio levels of AFSK, I'm sticking with um, FSK generated internally on my, my K3S. Now, the big debate would be for the other, you know, the Japanese rigs, that type of thing. They clearly aren't as good in other areas as the K3, so um, that's it for now. Um, um, let me get back to the PC here and uh, enjoy the rest of your Saturday. And um, hey, please be objective in any of your comments or you know anything that comes up in the uh, discussion groups. But um, hopefully, we've presented some good information here for everybody to to kind of chew on. All right, 73 for now, Max out, NG7M, bye.